let's talk about the bank reconciliation. It's really the only difficult part of the cash chapter. And the only really way to explain it is to do one. So I'm going to work through a problem with you. What we want to do is set up two columns, one for what the bank has and one for what your books have. And so what we want to do is figure out each transaction and see who did it correctly and who's, who needs to make a correction or uh, update their records. So we'll start with uh, what's on the bank statement. And that will usually be given. That's this number here. And then you start with your cash balance in your general ledger. And that's the second number. As I said, those will normally be given unless you're doing a problem backwards. Then you just want to go through the transactions. Again, see who did it correctly. And that usually tells you which side has to be you made a deposit on December 31st that's not on the bank statement. So that 2145 is already included in your cash balance on your books, but the bank hasn't reported it yet. So we'll have a deposit in transit. And that should increase the amount that the bank has. So basically you did it correctly on your books. The bank just hasn't caught up yet. Second, you have a lockbox agreement with the bank and they collected $2,000. What a lockbox means is for a lot of your bills, you send your payment directly to the bank and they deposit it rather than sending it to the company itself. And so it's a nice internal control that prevents your employees from stealing the receipt. So, the bank already recorded it as a deposit, but you haven't yet. So we need to put the label lockbox deposit. So they've got that included, but you don't. So again, that's going to increase your balance because you really do have that money. They charged you a service fee though, and you haven't recorded that yet. A service fee is going to cost you $5. So there's $5 that, that they've taken out of your account that you haven't reported yet. Next, we have a check from a customer who was rejected and returned for insufficient funds. So that means we recorded it as a deposit, but it never made it into the account because of the check bounce. So uh, we call those NSF or uh, not sufficient funds. Hopefully you've never seen that on your bank statement because that means you bounced a check. Um, but we have that non-sufficient funds check. We put it as a deposit. It didn't really go in so that we need to subtract out. That takes us to checks outstanding. So we've written some checks. We really do have paid for them. They just haven't cleared yet. And so we did it correctly on the books. Um, but they haven't cleared the bank. So we have to put this on the bank side. I'm just gonna copy and paste this just to make it a little bit faster. Um, but those are checks that will reduce our bank account when they finally clear. So those need to come off of the bank balance. So we're zipping right along here. Next, the bank charged your account for the safe deposit fee. We haven't included that fee yet. So safe deposit fee, we need to put, take out of our, our cash balance on the books. Um, the bank paid a utility bill by electronic funds transfer, so we have the electric bill automatically come out of our bank account. So we haven't bothered to record that yet. So this is utility bill paid. That has to subtract out. Is that, uh, I'm, off, I'm off a line there. 
Just see it if you were paying attention. Right, so that's $1,000. The bank mistakenly charged you a service fee. So we got our statement. It's got this $30.50. And we called and yelled at them and said, we, we do not owe that. So we need the bank needs to fix their side. Um, so error in service fee. What we're doing over here is a schedule, so you can label things however you understand them. They took it out. We said add it back in. We're not doing it, so we won't need to add that. And then last but not least, uh, we wrote a check for uh, Eight ninety eight sixty nine, but it was recorded as eight ninety six. So our bookkeeper transposed the number when she booked it to the um, cash account. So you might have seen I had this on here twenty seconds ago, but I'll put it back. So we're off by twenty seven dollars. It's our book that's messed up because our um, accountant didn't do it correctly. So we have an error in. Um, um, and check. So the question is, you add or subtract it? Uh, we wrote the check for 869, so that's how much came out of the bank, but they recorded as 896, so that means we have to add that $27. All right, hopefully. Then you total these up and say a little prayer. And if you did everything correctly, they should balance and they do. So the amount that we truly have at the end of the uh, year or the end of the month is 18,963.77. That's really what the bank balance is on that date once everything clears. And that's therefore what we should have on our book. Just a little thing, if you ever don't come out, now hopefully every time you do one of these, it will balance. But if it doesn't, what you want to do is subtract those two balances. And then, I'll pick a different number here. See how much you're off. <coughs> so, you know, here, if, if I'm off by 4250, you see that number, then you just kind of go looking around, seeing if you can find 4250 anywhere. And you say, oh, there it is. That's probably what I forgot to do. The other thing, um, is you can do the same thing and then take this number, your difference, and divide it by two. And that will tell you then go look for that number and you see this 4250. And what that's telling you is you should have subtracted it instead of added it. And that that's how you'll know that's the correction. The last thing you can do is like that at 72. You can take the amount you're off and divide by nine. And if that number comes out relatively even, it comes out to you know a five, or um, if you notice our 27s would come out to a three, you know that you transposed a number, and from where it is, you can tell on this case it's going to be the, the dollars. If it came out on the pennies, you know the pennies were what was off. And so you want to look for numbers that you potentially could have flipped. And so again, I'm going to change that to 27. That will get us there. So that's what the bookkeeper should have done uh, to find that uh, $27 if uh, something else would have come up. All right. That's really all there is to it. So um, just do some practice to figure out which side you put things on. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward.